about wanting them to discuss uh, some and, and how we're taking it forward. There's also a subgroup which covers promotion and usability testing, which both of us are members of. By the way, if you're not a fan of animated clip art, look away now. Um, so, marketing, as, as we mentioned, uh, we took it on in September 2012. We actually only got access to it, I think, in about August 2012. So we really pushed it as a kind of a soft launch. We weren't 100% sure of the capabilities of Summit, um, so we didn't feel fully confident in launching it uh, fully to uh, our students and our academics. We uh, also took it as a one-year trial, so we wanted basically it to grow by word of mouth um, and just kind of a soft launch, as I mentioned, to see how it would be taken forward. We also, uh, as is the way for probably quite a few of you, decided to, uh, we're currently implementing uh, Libka, uh, Talus Reading List, which we put all our reading lists online, and we haven't, for that long, had LibGuides as well. So it seemed like we were doing a lot in a very short space of time, so there's a lot to go through. Um, so we didn't really create any promotional material or things like that. We, we did start to look at that for the summer exam period, so we'd make people more aware of it, and it looked like we were going to continue with summer. And one thing uh, we, we didn't really touch on in too great a detail was staff support, so raising awareness with staff, both academic and support staff. We did some demonstrations for frontline library staff, uh, but no kind of hands-on how to use something, how to get the best out of it, how to promote it to students who may come to you on the desk. Um, and that is something that is an area that we, I think, probably regret. Um, and we also didn't go out to academics and show it to academics directly. Um, so again, it was all soft launch, kind of uh, word of mouth. In information uh, sessions, uh, we only kind of mentioned it to certain embedded uh, the information literacy sessions that we have. So obviously these are only for certain departments and certain faculty, so it's quite a small number of the students we saw. And again, for the kind of September, October sessions, we weren't too sure about Summit, so we, we found it hard to fully show the capabilities to the students we were talking to. One side of this was uh, that we always used a generic search. So we found a search that worked for us, we knew it worked, we tested the links, we were confident doing it. And that was actually involving, unfortunately, Rupert Murdoch. Um, Rupert Murdoch is a very good way of showing the different, how to use the facets, how you, how you can do advanced searches in Summit, uh, so if you need, if you need a, a, a topic to do a search on, Rupert Murdoch does work, comes um, But it was very much presented as an additional service. So we would do our normal information literacy and then at the end kind of say, oh, and by the way, we've just taken on this thing called Summit. You could use it if you like. We gave a brief description. It was not at the heart of the session. So the following um, all the kind of small amount of promotion we did, we still wanted to see if students had found it, if academics had found it, if staff had found it. And we did this in a few different ways. So the first two, uh, the first one was really a detailed online survey. We've done this twice, we did it around Christmas time, so about six uh, a few months into the project, and then again in May, June time. And probably the most interesting thing about this is that in the Christmas survey, for the student survey, we have a £50 Amazon uh, voucher. Uh, if your name was picked out of the hat, if you completed the survey, and we got over 100 res uh, responses. For the summer one, it was only £20, and we got about 30 or 40 responses. So, you read into that. Uh, we also did staff surveys, where we didn't offer a prize, and we got about 15 of them. So, it, it seems that you do need uh, some kind of carrot in front of the, uh, in front of the user. Um, the Christmas survey was also seen as a kind of promotional tool, so it was very much, have you heard of Summit? If so, what do you think? If not, please go away, have a play with it, and come back and give us any feedback you possibly can. We were asking things, just basic questions really, so what do you like most about Summit? What do you dislike? Um, where do you normally start your research? How will this help you improve your research? We asked the staff, do you see this as a valuable tool? Asking them what level of student they would use uh, for. So that was a really useful way of gathering some real good quantitative data that we could then use. Two other methods we got for gathering data were, was a student focus group. So that was uh, quite early on in the year, about January uh, this year. 
Uh, and that was basically just to try and get some interaction with the students. I've uh, got about, I think we were about 10 students around, um, in a room and just had a chat around some and what it could offer, what they thought. And then we also did some more detailed usability testing in around May, June. And this was basically just grabbing anybody in the library who would sit down, run through about six exercises. And the great thing that we, we got from uh, both the student focus group and the usability testing was kind of breaking down our assumptions of how people would use Summit. So I think we had a fear of people who not know how to use Summit. We need to teach people. We need to really instruct people. But the usability and the student uh, the focus groups showed that actually, once they got into it, once they found it and started searching, they were quite you know, very capable um, of, of finding the material they needed. And going back to a comment earlier, they did use the facets, especially in the usability testing, because we kind of sat over their shoulders staring at what they were doing. And we found that they all used the facets very easily, just said, oh yeah, great, yeah, facets, and, and understood them. It was very clear. So that was a very positive um, message that we took from, from those sessions. So along with the quantitative data we, we were able to gather from the, uh, the surveys, some qualitative data around from the workshops, the good old fashioned work class, which I think are about 10 years out of date, man, for the reason. Um, and the nice thing is that the library was the key point. Now I'm not sure if, because we were given out prizes and things, people thought they had to say the library. <laughs> I don't know. But also, you can't help but notice that Google is still probably the second main point. So that started us to think, well, how do we promote some, do we promote it as a Google, as we mentioned, of the library resources? And that is actually some of the comments that came out. They said, okay. But this was done in the, this is from the summer, uh, the summer survey and workshops. And it is nice to see that summer does appear, quite small, but it does appear there. So it's nice that people had started using it. And actually our usage figures, showed that even though we had hardly promoted it, it was, we had really high usage, well up there with our other databases. So that was a very positive sign. And then also, uh, we noticed that uh, from the second question, so what do you like most about Summit? And the great thing about this was that it, they'd obviously tuned into everything that we wanted them to tune into, the fact that it's quick, easy search result, uh, place to start, it's relevant, it's useful, uh, you have large uh, number of results which you can then whistle down. So it was really nice to see that they almost intuitively picked up on the power of Summon and what it can what it can provide. The main thing that came out um, from both the usability and the uh, focus group we had um, was that we they didn't <laughs> basically because of our soft launch they didn't know about Summon. So a lot of people were so, oh, what is this? This is brilliant. I wish we'd known about this earlier. And we had kind of hidden it. Um, so on our library homepage, as you can see, this is, we have our, our library catalog search, because we still have them separately at home. Um, and then we have a tab which you can go on to summon. But as we found, if you looked at our library homepage, why would you click on summon? Because you wouldn't know what summon was. So it was, people struggled to find how to search it. Um, and then also, at the moment, our kind of web presence is in a state of flux, shall we say. So they found that the, we do have help pages around Summon, but they were actually quite hard to find. So we, we're trying to take all of this information um, and learn from some of our uh, experiences, which will be greater uh, promoted by my colleague Michael. Swap microphones. Right, so um, I'm talking about promotion for the 2013-14 um, academic year. So again, we this focuses on marketing, staff support, and actually information to see delivery. Um, first of all, it would be a great uh, sum of presence on our lab, library web pages, but particularly our, our reviewed lib guides, which are our subject resource gateways. But I'll talk about that a little bit later in more 
detail. We're also going to use promotional materials such as springy flags, which are the pop-up springy flags. You can fix <laughs> to uh, PCs, standalone search PCs and catalogs and that kind of thing. And also pop-up banners, the banners that you pop-up. Um, <laughs> we'll use not those around the library and also uh, use them at promotional events. Okay. Um, staff support. Obviously, this is very important. Um, oh, just a second. How do you get those two? Ah, yeah, here. They do move. They do move. We warned you about the animator and it not worked. So. So, um, right, yes, that's cool. Uh, first of all, front library, front line library staff. Uh, we're going to give training to those to increase awareness um, so they're more confident about demonstrating some and answering questions about some. And that way we also get continuity of key messages in terms of. Um, students being given the same advice in terms of pathways to research. Academic staff, so we're thinking about dropping workshops to those, focus mail shots, to introduce someone to them, and if they're already aware of it, to help them maximise the functionality of someone. Um, the real meat of our promotion will be through IL delivery, uh, so induction, catching new students straight away, exposing them to some of its benefits. Um, embedded information sessions with you. These are all levels across faculties. Um, with these, these will give us the, uh, the opportunity not just to demonstrate some, but also um, to get students to engage with some in an interactive way using active learning techniques. Um, in a similar way, we'll use drop-in sessions for specific resources, including some um, and we also deliver on postgraduate research training modules. So again, we'll be using interactive active learning techniques to help students to really get to grips with Southern. Um, our skills team, they do a lot of initiatives around peer assisted learning. So again, we want to get the Southern message to students via those programs. Um, cornerstone of our strategy in terms of uh, promoting summon via information literacy delivery is through our lib guides, which I mentioned earlier. So these are currently under review. This is a draft new lib guide. So this is the starting point page. And we've put some in there quite prominently on the, on the on the front page of it. So you've got links to other resources. If we click on the journals and articles, some is obviously very prominent on this page, on this tab, along with um, tutorials on how to use some. But in addition to that, we think it's important to Give someone a proper position, but also not the exclusion of the other resources that we've got to offer for various reasons that have been raised by other uh, speakers this morning. So, and we also want to integrate sort of access to resources with advice, information, literacy support, guidance. Um, if you speak to students, we found that they welcome advice about research pathways and what to use when, what's a starting point, what's an end point across different levels of study. So we've got a mixture there of summon, IL advice about summon, and then advice about finding articles and using different subject databases and multidisciplinary databases. You can then click on those databases by linking to that. We've also got information about um, in terms of IL advice about planning research. So we've got a whole guide there about conducting web-based research uh, and conducting, um, just setting about your research assignments. So we're trying to mix all these different things together. It's one package somebody can go to and get all the need in one place. 
Right, okay. So to sum up, um, I have delivery through the PID guides. I'm trying to transform the guides into not only subject gateways, but also information literacy gateways. Um, Lib guides are the centerpiece of our face-to-face -face and online IAM field. So we're using both. We're using Lib guides both in embedded sessions and also students can just get the same stuff online. So we've got continuity of message there. Um, Summon is a prominent part of that information finding narrative because of its position on the lib guides. But on top of that, we think it's important to provide that choice. So we've got someone as maybe a starting point, it could be an end point, depending on your level of study, the subject, the context you're working in at a given time. But it might not be an end point. So we think it's important to provide access to different resources with regard to including specific databases. Right, so we haven't got conclusions because it's an ongoing kind of project. Um, but these are sort of discussion points that we'd be interested in other people's comments. Um, so the only issue of striking the balance between some and other research resources. Uh, continuity of message in terms of students receiving the same message about when to use some and what the other options they can use. Um, how can we better use feedback and usage data to promote summon? And the whole issue of user training, how often should that be? Um, how, how often we do sort of top ups and that kind of thing. Thank you very much. Is there any questions for online lunch? Yes. Um, we've got one from Andrew Taylor online who says it sounds like the soft watch might have had something to do with allowing staff time to get to grips or leave the summon. A, would you agree? And B, would you do anything different if you were launching this September? I, I think that's, well, I think the soft launch was partly because we had it as a trial for a year, so we didn't want to raise people's expectations and say this is an embedded service that we, we offer. Uh, but I think it's fair to say that it, the, the soft launch did help because we didn't have much of a running time. So I think that is true. Um, as for if we were to start again, um, maybe have more of a running time. <laughs> um, so we could plan, the, plan a bit more of our health materials and, our, and how we were going to address it and how we were going to use it early on. Um, but I think one of the big things we found is that just people using it it's, it's been nice in, in, a, in a way that we, we now have the data to show that when people have used it, having found it themselves, it's, it's still been a great success. And now when we promote it to everyone, we have this kind of bed, bed of knowledge that we know it's worth and, and it gives us something to promote. Yeah. And the overwhelming reason for the sub launch was the fact that it wasn't by a On the website right here, so I just wanted to go back to where the summon is placed on the actual website. Um, on the, so you've got, uh, this is where, where it will be on our lib guide, so this is on the subject guide. So you do have to scroll down. Yeah, well, on, on actually on our computers, you don't have to do so this is where we're going to um, <laughs> Well, as I said, this is, and this is still a draft, so we are also thinking of having moving, shifting everything it up and, and doing something with this. So that is something we are aware of. Uh, I'll just show you the. Um, this is how we, we have it on our library page at the moment. So it's this tab box. But again, this is being completely revamped for, this, for the uh, for the new start term, and it will have its own search box on the home page as well. So really, I'm trying to push it. Sorry, I was just curious to see that you've branded some of the summon as opposed to live research. Like yeah. Is that, is that a consequence of the soft launch approach? Do you actually intend to call it anything else later? I think that was a consequence of the soft yeah. launch. Um, and also, I think it's easier to rebrand some if it is going to be in one search. You've still got a catalogue and some 
and it's difficult that if you rename some and then you've got two things that sound maybe like a catalog and you might be confused. We are, we are kind of investigating whether we're going to put our catalog into some and they'll like first. But, so perhaps then if we go down that route, then perhaps we would look at changing the name up for the moment because the two such things will not seem things. Yeah, yeah. How do you use the summon? Um, oh, sorry. So, yeah, the, the question was how we're using um, summon and task fire together, uh, the reading of software people are aware of. It. Um, we, our, <laughs> <laughs> are we? The best thing I found for summon is actually the people inputting the reading list. Because if there are any articles on the reading list, rather than having to go find the journal, find the issue. They can just use some of it and you can find the article and you can link them there. How we're embedding it, I don't know. We do link between both things. But uh, at the moment, the, uh, the reading list project uh, is at sort of stage two. We've got sort of at least three stages uh, in terms of different inputs and different levels of reading list onto the software. So I think it is something that will, will evolve the relationship between some and the reading list and the PRE. I don't know. <laughs> 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 okay. right, um, you, so you use libguides as a subject and portal. Yeah. Um, and they help you get students to find the right subject guide. Yeah. Or subject portal. And B, who looks after them? Is that academic librarian for yeah. the subject? Yeah. How do you then therefore ensure Good. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. No, um, so when they were created, um, each academic uh, librarian worked closely with the department, with academics from the department, the library reps, to ensure that the correct material that they would like to promote was, was featured on there. And that is something we still do. So whenever we revamp it, we will talk to the departments. Um, we have a, a kind of guide page um, for our lib guides, which people find and then they can choose uh, the subject most appropriate to them. We are hoping uh, something out of Summon 2.0 perhaps uh, to use the, uh, the personalization bar on the right hand side where you can promote certain lib guides and uh, subject guides and things like that. So hopefully that, that's where we can build it in from the other direction. So. We do try to obviously protect some of the things and to be cool, but trying to link between the VLE library current page and including the guides and some is something we need to continue yeah. sort of try to, yeah. to to improve. Thank you very much. So that'd be it. Yeah. Um, <laughs>